because they don't have enough space in their homes. Many people use storage facilities to hold their garbage and treasures. They might eventually neglect to make the payment or realize they don't need the products. They'd frequently leave things for someone else to take care of instead of clearing out the container. A few people will submit bids for the storage containers. They get whatever is inside if they win with the highest winning bid. This might go wrong because some only contain garbage. But if you're fortunate, it's possible to hit the jackpot. And that's what this man desired. With his final bid, the man obtained the storage container. The contents, however, can be worthwhile or simply junk. He was thrilled when he found a locked safe within. Yet, he never anticipated that it would prompt the cops to show up at his door only a few hours later. While placing bids on the storage containers up for auction, the man was becoming more at ease. You don't know what was inside, so spending money like this was a major bet. He hoped for the best, nevertheless, because he had heard tales of classic vehicles and wealth. Even though he was growing exhausted, the excitement of the unexpected kept him going. He made the decision to call it a day if he didn't uncover anything significant in the following auction container. Would he have a happy ending? Joe and about two zero other people gathered outside this container. Everyone was interested in seeing inside this 5x15 apartment. They could hold the belongings of any one-bedroom apartment. Therefore, they were too huge to actually see anything. The auctions didn't take place amid shouting, drama, and screaming like you see on television. Even so, it was entertaining, particularly when Joe engaged in a bidding conflict with a potential bidder. He liked to win, but he had to be careful because he had a budget to follow. Joe was now powerless to stop. There was plenty of furnishings in this container, which was often a positive indicator. If it was old, he might charge a premium amount for it. In addition, there were some further things he wished to view. Yet one woman kept raising the prices. Only $100 was the starting point, which was excessively exorbitant. As it went on, he was left wondering how much he ought to spend. He was determined and was now offering $350. He was unable to part with that container, but the price kept rising until $500 was offered as the winning bid. After they lost the bid, the majority of the spectators left the area. A few people, though, urged Joe to enter and begin going through the items. He wished he hadn't been the one who had to deal with it after he saw what was inside. Joe entered the room slowly, excited and nervous about what he may discover. Old furniture filled the container, which let him feel a little better. Joe now noticed that the furniture wouldn't cover the cost he had to pay for this unit, and he began to perspire. Joe looked around the space before settling on the drab gray container next to the floor-level chest of drawers. He went straight to it and tried to open it. He uncovered a group of VHS tapes and pulled them out. He noticed a message underneath the cassettes, which sent chills through his body. Overall, the handwriting was sloppy, and Joe checked over the videotapes separately. The sole word on the note was don't. There was no more information on the labels provided, although some had dates on them. Have you ever had the sense that someone is watching you? Joe experienced it as a gradual crawl. He even thought someone was staring at him. He turned to look behind him, but there was nothing there. It was just Joe. It wasn't going to be simple for Joe and his incredible discovery. He heard a knock on his door about two hours after the finding. The container was surrounded by policemen. What was he currently engaged in? And what did he discover? Joe opened a bundle of sticky paper that was stored in the safe to discover $50 bills. He noticed increasing amounts of money as he continued. Who was the rightful owner? And how did it get there? Why did the authorities care about this? Joe finally understood what he had done. He texted pictures of the safe to his girlfriend because he was so eager to see it. Then he posted the safe's contents to his social media accounts. The police arrived for that reason. Even though he hadn't counted every penny, he was confident he could get by with it. He had $1 million available. He eventually went to talk to a policeman, but he quickly discovered that the police weren't the only ones curious about what was in the safe. Safes totaling roughly $7.5 million might be found scattered throughout the storage container. The problem, though, was that after learning of the discovery, the owner attempted to recover his riches by employing attorneys. Joseph was aware of his predicament. Joe was terrified when he started receiving threats 
after discovering the money. He was filled with questions as it turned into a nightmare. Why hadn't they gathered the money and who had hidden it there? He was also concerned about the VHS cassettes. The moment the police arrived, things picked up speed. Joe got a call from the lawyers to the original owner not long after that was resolved. They claimed he had to repay the entire sum of money, with the exception of the $600,000 finder's fee. Even though he felt better at the thought of getting paid for his trouble, he understood that the attorneys were only intimidating him. He had to consider what he ought to do next, but he didn't want to deal with the original owner of the safe. Joe was instructed not to open the container until the case was resolved. He had to figure out what was on the VHS cassettes, though. He thus unzipped one of the bags, inserted it into the VCR, and hit the play button. He claimed to have seen something terrible, and after watching the tapes, he was unable to forget what he had seen. He even experienced nightmares. He made an effort to convince himself that they were phony, but he wasn't certain. Joe was facing a difficult situation. He might be pursued if the safe's owner learns that he watched the tapes. He found out via acquaintances that after a storage container was sold, the contents were no longer the tenant's property. As a result, he was entitled to keep everything inside because he bought it legitimately. The attorneys, though, stood their ground. Joe began to wonder how someone could have overlooked leaving $7.5 million in a storage facility. On something like that, you don't become delinquent. Even though it was obvious that the owner wasn't a good person, he was concerned that his situation would only become worse. Following numerous threats of death and second thoughts, Joe decided to divide the funds equally. The storage container's former owners hadn't used or paid for it in a year. The auction was held for this reason. The self-storage business is comparable to real estate. You pay a person or business to keep your belongings in storage until you need them again. You can go almost whenever you want, but there are costs involved. Some demand payments on a daily, weekly, annual, or monthly basis. You must make the monthly payments for the storage unit on schedule, just like you would if you were renting an apartment for a landlord. The storage facility has some privileges if you don't. In most situations, they defer the cleanup to others while allowing auctions to recover part of the money they lost. The landlord will deal with a storage facility tenant if they don't pay by evicting them or selling the belongings at auction to recoup some of the loss. While some may find this unfair, storage facilities operate on very thin margins. Purchasing a storage unit without first seeing what is inside is frequently risky. You're hoping for good fortune and to stumble into hidden cash in items of clothes or valuable antique or unique furnishings. Nevertheless, this isn't always the case. It was unnerving for Joe to arrive at a storage unit with cash safes inside. What an amazing find. Even though he didn't get everything for it, a win is still a win, don't you think so?